So as we move on to challenge number five, we're going to step up the uh, uh, complexity of what we're doing just a little bit, but it's probably going to be a little bit simpler, shorter video than what some of the others are, just because of the concepts that we're going to teach in this one. And so just so everyone knows, these challenges are there for you to learn. I'm challenging everyone to learn something new. There isn't a prize at the end of this other than you, that if you make it all the way through and you do all these challenges, you should know how to use Inkscape pretty well as far as creating SVG files to bring into Design Space. So we're going to get started and I'm going to uh, import this jack-o-lantern image and there will be a link to this image in the video description down below so if you scroll down and look under the description you probably need to do this on a computer you will see a link to this image so you can download it to your computer and do the uh, video step by step just like I'm doing here so take time to download that first so I have Inkscape open and there's two ways I can open this file I can go to file open and open it normally or I can simply drag and drop this into Inkscape which is what I usually do and you can leave it on embed and hit OK and next I'll maximize my window and if I zoom in on this you'll see that the edges of this image are quite choppy and I did this on purpose I'm going to show you a feature of Inkscape and I'm going to hold control shift and adjust the size down a little bit and we'll go turn off this document properties. We'll turn off that page border. Someone did email me and tell me how to uh, set the default settings for that. So one of these days I'll do that. Um, but we're going to trace this uh, image. You don't have to trace an image like this to bring it into Design Space to cut it. But uh, this is the start of the portions of learning Inkscape where I'm going to teach you how to trace images. So uh, first thing we're going to do is click on this image. Uh, I'll zoom in just a little. We'll move it over here to the left and we're going to go to Path Trace Bitmap. Now the important thing you need to do before you do anything over here in this Trace Bitmap window is click on your image. So make sure it's selected. So you see your selection arrows. It doesn't matter if it's the, the rotate arrows or the adjustment arrows as long as your image is selected. If you do not select it, you will not get a preview over here in the window when you click update. So being that we are working with a very simple black and white image, what we're going to do is set our scans all the way down to two. I'm going to set this for colors and I accidentally clicked off my image. So uh, be careful there. Make sure it is selected. I'm going to select the smooth option and when I do that you'll see what it does to these edges real, uh, real, really really well. Uh, it's going to make this really smooth for us. In this case I'm going to uncheck the stock scans. We'll go over the stock scans later on in some other videos when we have uh, more complicated images. And I'm going to click remove background. So what it's going to do is it's going to strip all of that uh, white, solid white out of there. This is a JPEG. And with the image selected again, I'm going to click Update, and you should see a good clean preview of your image. And I'm going to click OK, and you're going to see it go to stop and then back to OK really quick, probably just about a half a second, if that. And when I did that, it traced my image. Now, it looks like it didn't do anything over here, but if I grab the top and move it off, you'll see that I have two now. now I'm going to close this, and I'm going to zoom in really close. I'll bring this one over here closer and you can see what it did to the uh, edges and made them a lot smoother. Now if I look at them they are still a little bit choppy. They still have some uh, uh, jagged edges to them down in there and I'm going to show you how to fix that too. So now that we have uh, traced this we can get rid of our original image. Just highlight it and click delete. And we're going to click our image and click on the nodes button. And if you look, you will see there are a lot of nodes around the edges of this. And what a node is, uh, is, you know, we talked about that in one of the previous videos where you can make some adjustments. We used a, uh, the nodes on that square in the first, one of the first videos to make a trapezoid. And so uh, the nodes are basically anytime a bull 
your blade or pin encounters a node, it has to kind of take an action, whether it's turn or make an adjustment or, or what it is. And so we have a lot of them in this image uh, for such a simple image. Now the way we're going to reduce those is we're going to go to Path, Simplify, and you'll see that it removed, you know, almost all of them really, it, it reduced them down to the bare minimum that it really needs to, to be that image. And we can come in here and zoom in a little bit. We'll go back to our node editor and select the image. And you'll see that we can make adjustments by grabbing some of these little handles. And in one of the other videos, a little bit later, we're going to go over some of these uh, different node types and what they do, because you can change the type of nodes that you have and make different types of adjustments with them. We'll straighten those up just a little bit. Now you see we have a nice clean image, and I'll go back to the selection tool so that it'll not show the nodes. And uh, it's a jack-o'-lantern, jack so it's not going to be perfect anyway. Uh, I think that it adds a little bit of character to it. So next, we're going to need that challenge, uh, the image that we created from the challenge number four, which was the coffee logo. So we're going to go to File and Import. And so uh, go browse to those images that you have been saving. And we will import that. And next, we will select our image here. We'll hold Control Shift, and we're going to adjust the size of that face down a little bit, and put it right over here in the middle of our uh, coffee logo. And we're going to highlight everything. We're going to go Object Group. We will save this as Challenge Number Five, and we want to make this a plain SVG, always a plain SVG. And we'll switch over to Design Space and we'll upload this SVG file we just created. And you see in the preview, for some reason, it doesn't upload it in place. I'm not sure why uh, Design Space doesn't do that. Uh, it does it on certain uh, images or SVGs, and I have not narrowed that down yet. But it'll still be okay. We're going to cut that as different layers anyway. Plus, we can ungroup it and fix it inside the project. And so. We will select this and we'll ungroup it and put this into place. And we can highlight that and group it again uh, because we're going to adjust the size. Don't forget, remember it imports bigger than it should be. So we'll adjust that to uh, 3.75 inches. And then if we hit go, we'll see on our map that it will ask for uh, the green layer and then the black layer. And so if you're able to complete this challenge, this was a short one, pretty simple, but we tackled some new topics with tracing and simplifying. So uh, take a screenshot, post it on Facebook, and tag me in it, and I would appreciate it. Now we'll recap the things you learned in this video challenge. We opened a JPEG image file using Inks, uh, Inkscape, and we traced that JPEG to turn it into a path. So we took a... Uh, Pick a flat file image and convert it to a scalable path. We simplified that path to reduce the number of nodes. Now it's important for me to mention you don't always have to do that. So when I looked at the number of nodes visually on the screen I could tell that it was a lot of nodes for that simple of an image so I did the simplify step. So as we get through more of this you'll pick up more and understand more about the nodes and how to edit those. We uh, imported the coffee logo we created in challenge number four. We grouped those objects and sized them appropriately. We saved it as a plain SVG and then we imported it into Design Space. So, again, if you were able to complete this, take a screenshot if you can and post it out on Facebook and tag me in it. If my video has been helpful to you, please subscribe to my channel. And after you subscribe, be sure to click the little gear and check this box so that you'll receive an email notification when I upload a new video. You can also help support my channel by making a small donation on patreon.com slash Troy Young.